a fill is not a building block for me. A fill is more a concept that I use when I want to play a fill. The rhythmic material you have is one thing and it's never gonna change. I mean, in, in 500 years from now, there's going to be 16 16th notes to the bar. What you can change, though, is how you make these concepts come to life. Nicely done, man. Nicely done. <laughs> Thank you very much. So effortless. Thanks. You have such a good feel. I love it. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Yost Nickel. Hi, everybody. How you doing? I'm good. I'm really good. This is our second time having Yost on Drumio, and it's always a treat. You are such a great player and an amazing educator. Uh, not only have you been teaching for many years, you also taught like the amazing Anakin Isles. That's true. And 
I think you taught you taught Benny some lessons as well, right, Benny Grab? Yeah, I wouldn't say that I was his teacher for a long time, but um, when I met him, he was a student at a course where I teach, and after that, he asked me to give him some private lessons, and he was very good back then already. Yeah, and he uh, <laughs> got everything I wanted to say very fast. So. I sure he did. Yeah. yeah, and we became friends afterwards and hung out and played together many times. Very cool, man. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you're back on drum. You have a really cool lesson for you. It's called a fun and easy approach, approach to drum fills. And if you guys haven't seen anything of Yost, uh, you can check him out online, yostnickel.com. You can follow him on all of his social platforms. Um, if you're in Germany, you might have heard of the band that you've been playing for for around 12 years. Right. Uh, called Jan Delay and Disco Number no. One. That's right. Did I get it right? Yeah, perfect. Awesome. It was perfect. I've never heard them, but you said they're a pretty, pretty big act out in Germany. Out in Europe, yeah, right? we, we get to play to large audiences, which is fun. But the most important part for me is that the music is fun yeah. to play. And um, the, the uh, climate in the band, like everybody like, uh, likes each other. And uh, Jan is very generous in every way. So that's, that's really awesome. Very cool. Very cool. So yeah. check out that band too. Huge thanks to Sonar. This is a beautiful SQ1 kit. It's a new kit. If you it like is. the sound of it, I love the look of it. Go and check it out. Uh, Minel as well. Beautiful symbols out there. Remo and Vic Firth. That's correct. Awesome. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to stop talking. We're going to get right into the lesson topic. A fun and easy approach to drum fills, Yost. Take it away, man. Okay, so um, whenever I approach uh, drum fills, the first thing I want to be aware of is uh, what subdivision do I use to create fills? There's obviously many choices, but in this case, uh, I want, uh, want to talk about fills in 16th notes. Um, just because I think that's the, the subdivision uh, we use most. And uh, the first thing I do when I, uh, when I approach any subdivision that is divisible by two, so it could be four notes or six notes or eight notes um, to the quarter note, is that I look for a group of notes that is exactly one quarter note long, right? So what we do is uh, a group of four notes, and um, there's many ways of playing a group of four notes. Here's just one uh, thing that you could do, which uh, I like a lot because the sound is good and you can use it a lot. It's right, left, left kick. Mm -hmm. And um, so you have one accent uh, on the right hand and then two softer notes uh, with your left hand, and the kick should be about the same volume as the accent in your right hand. So it's it's based on the quarter notes, so the phrasing is really very simple. I'm just going to play it anyway. So here's one bar of time and one bar of this figure in the fill. Very slow. One, two, three, four, and... So the phrasing couldn't be any easier. Mm -hmm. But it, it'll get interesting soon. Um, so there's al always only one kick, except when I get back into the groove, because I played bass drum on one, then we have two kicks, but in the figure itself is only one kick. So as soon as this is clear, what you should do, and then it becomes interesting, is move that same figure um, to the eighth note offbeat. Could be any of the eighth note offbeats, but at this point, what I want to do is start on one end. And just so we have something on one, I'm going to hit my snare anyway on one and then start the figure on one end. Okay. Let me show you how that sounds. Okay, so that's the very same figure, but it sounds different because it starts at a different point in time. Okay, so before you get even further into mm -hmm. this, this is a, a fun and uh, easy approach to drum fill. So you're, you're, what, explain the system to us and how you're going to go through all this stuff. Yeah, the, my idea is to, to first get a figure uh, going, that's what we just did, and then uh, hear how the figure sounds starting on the downbeat, and then next step is how it sounds starting on the offbeat. And then it's going to get interesting because we are going to get into different ways of mixing uh, the start on the downbeat with the start on the offbeat. Okay, so you're just like displacing it, I guess, is the first step. Yeah, it's displaced by an eighth note, and it's one of the most common ways of phrasing 
uh, fills and sixteenth notes. Okay, um, and um, you know this is your your method. There's a lot of methods we've seen about playing drum fills and how to be creative. Right. Um, what makes this one unique to you? <laughs> the thing is, I, of course, I don't know all of these methods. Yeah. I haven't seen them all. Um, unique to me is it because uh, it really helped me a lot um, become free in my phrasing. And um, that's something I think is overlooked um, many times because um, groupings are not there to give you a hard time. It really is a tool to make you um, improvise with uh, certain figures to come up with different fills every time. Mm -hmm. And it's always and it's also going to train your ear and your hearing. So that's uh, a side effect, mm -hmm. but it's necessary because if you can't hear them properly, you can't play them. Awesome. Okay, we'll carry on. So do you want to do number two one more time for us? You've displaced that four note figure yeah. starting on the end of one. Okay, one, two, three, four, and one. Right, so um, the phrasing, just, just the underlying rhythm of that fill is this. And you can clap along if you want to. Um, this is one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So the underlying rhythm is really simple. We are playing 16th notes, but the underlying rhythm is just based on half the note value on eighth notes. Gotcha. And um, the next thing I want to do before I get into uh, different phrasing and orchestration options is I want to close that gap that is um, there after one, right? We um, have an eighth note on one and then continue playing on one end. But before we do that, uh, you should uh, play a two bar fill out of the two things we just did. Um, so play two bars of time and then play the two bar fill, combine examples one and two in a two bar fill. That's all there is. So I'm going to just show, show that. Three, four, and. And uh, now I want to close that gap, which uh, you have uh, at the beginning and at the end of bar two. So instead of just hitting this now once uh, and playing eighth notes, uh, an eighth note, I'm gonna play two sixteenth notes, both accented, right? So just bar two with that closed gap sounds like this. Okay. Okay. So that's I've prepared something that, that I would like to uh, demonstrate because then it's really easy to understand. So here is um, what we have written down as example four. What I just played. Uh, it's just the same uh, in my own sloppy handwriting. So what we got here is we play, and that's, this is this is really the phrasing. We play the group of four, four times, right? And then we have a group of two notes, which is just two accents, these, here, and also at the end. And we're going to play that just like we did once, and then the group of four, three times, and at the end the group of two, two times, which gives us a two bar fill in 16th notes. Okay, so, so do we need to know like math and get out a pen and paper and, and write a bunch and get your calculator out for this method or is... I, I don't think so. It's, it, it's very basic math. Okay. Uh, but a lot of music, even harmony, is, is based on numbers. So it's, it's good to not be afraid of that. Right. So now we have, re we have this, right? So when, whenever you see four, you play right, left, left, kick in 16th notes. Right, left, left, foot, or kick. And whenever you see two, you play two sixteenth notes 
both accented, which is just right left. So in case you're afraid of numbers, don't worry. I have uh, written out a few different rhythmic combinations of the same idea. So on the PDF, we just explained number four, and he explained how, I guess, you internalize it with the number system. On the PDF on the last two pages, there's a whole sheet of different yeah. numbered rhythms. I'll get to that later, and okay, I, I'll explain sure. that later. And um, I just want to point out that this, this is not the way I play, it's just the way I practice, mm -hmm. right? So when I play, I, don't, I never think of numbers, I never count, I always, Sometimes my mind might count if I have to play a piece where there's an odd time signature and I don't know the piece that good, so I might count, but normally I don't uh, count, I just play. But when I practice, I'm very analytic, and so I get into systems and stuff. So now that you've explained four, play, play four for us a couple times just so we can let this all sink in, if that's all right. The same, Phil? Yeah. Okay, I'll do that, and um, just for you to be able to, to make uh, to different, different, differentiate, well, what's the yeah, word? Yeah, that works, differentiate works. Differentiate between the two. Whenever I play four, I'm gonna uh, play the accent on the tom. Okay. And whenever I play two, I'm gonna play the two accents on the snare. That makes it easier to follow, I think. Okay. So that's the same uh, fill again. Oh, one, And just cool. by adding the toms, it starts to sound even better, or it starts to, to sound like a real fill and mm -hmm. not an exercise anymore. So the, the underlying rhythm of that fill is, I'm gonna clap that too, it's, it's also written down on the um, sheet. It's really basic, but I'm, I want to uh, stress the importance of being aware of the underlying rhythm, is this, right? Three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, Three, four, one. That's what we are playing the fill off of. And um, so if you have difficulties in hearing the group of four starting off on the offbeat, my best piece of advice is to count out loud. Mm -hmm. I know it might be annoying to some people because uh, I avoided that for a long mm -hmm. time. Um, but then I started getting into it and it, it really helps in hearing any phrase better and, 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 and playing better because you're just, you're just more aware of the quarter note parts. So I would suggest you do that. It's my best tip. Okay, sounds good, man. Okay, and then before um, we talk about different things, I would like to just demonstrate a different combination of these fills. And now you can take a look at example number five. So the, the idea is that we start with the two right left and then play the four right afterwards and we keep on doing the, that until the end of two bars so it's always two four two four and this is then already a really great fill let's hear it <laughs> okay and i'm gonna use the same orchestration just just to make it easy to follow So that's the same concept, we just used two different ingredients, four being right-left, uh, two being right-left, four being right-left-left kick. And um, before I get into different phrasing options, uh, so different rhythms that you uh, play, I would like to, to just take a look at orchestration a little bit, because um, if you turn around the orchestration and instead of playing the two on the snare, you play these on uh, maybe these two toms, and then play the four on the snare, the whole sound of the fill changes without you changing the sticking or the rhythmic idea. It, st it just stays the same. Let me uh, show that. And you can combine these two ways like this. Yeah. 
So I, I uh, didn't do anything else than what I already explained. Of course, later on you can you can be more you can uh, f be more free uh, with the orchestration. You could split up the uh, two between snare and tom. Show us some yeah. show, show some of your own um, have adder, but use that same two four two four concept, so we can see where we can take this. Because okay. that's what you're thinking of. You're thinking of that pulse, right? Right. So basically, what I'm thinking is start the Guba 4 on the downbeat and move it to the offbeat by throwing in two. Makes sense. That's really all there is. So show us what you can do with it once you yep. get into your creative zone. Okay. Uh, one, two, three. Okay. So if you just throw in some symbols, uh, it opens up new sound possibilities. And yeah, many sometimes I just use the same concept but play it twice as fast. Mm -hmm. You want me to show it? Yes. Okay. Hundred percent. Oh. And I'm sure, you all, I'm sure you all heard fills like these. Mm -hmm. And this is the rhythmic concept behind it, combining groups of two and four. You could even uh, create your own combinations by just adding the numbers two and four randomly until you end up having 32. And the last thing you should do if you're interested in it, and I'm not talking about next week, I'm talking about in a few weeks or even sure. months, so take your time. Um, the last thing you should do is don't look at the sheet at all, just improvise uh, using groups of two and four. Mm -hmm. Don't do anything else, so it's a very limited uh, improvisation, it's just two and four, and um, get through that and then you will stumble and fall, and that's good. And um, in the end you will, you will be like, uh, okay, I'm going to use that concept, but you're not going to use any specific phrase. It's right. just the concept that helps you create fills. Yeah, and I think that's a big one. I know, I understand this, I understand this concept, I think it's great. And I think a lot of drummers, they just phrase all their fills off of that quarter note all the time. Mm -hmm. One, two, three, four, however they orchestrate it. Yeah. But this is a different way of just thinking about, the, almost like changing the pulse a little bit yeah. and phrasing over these different, you can call them groupings, you can call them whatever you want, but the idea is there. Now, let me ask you a question preemptively, because I'm sure some people might say, how is this fun and easy? You had to be writing down numbers, you had to be <laughs> counting, yeah. you know, how, how do you bridge that gap? What do you say to people that might say that? Um, uh, yeah. Well, the thing is, with a musical instrument, nothing comes for free, right? So you have to put in a little bit of an effort. And uh, I guess the, the biggest obstacle would be um, to hear the phrases right. Right. That's probably the biggest problem. So what I would suggest is, uh, whenever you have like five minutes off and you're not even on the kit, just play some of the phrases, phrases using your hands on your, on your legs, tap your foot on the floor and count while you do it. And that way you get used to these phrases. Show us what you mean. Like this, okay. Um, so let me, th let me s um, play the same combination. I always combine two with four. And I'm gonna count um, 16th notes first. So it's three E and the four E and the one E and the two E and the three E and the four E and the one E and the two E and the three E and the four E and the one. And then, once you feel comfortable doing that, you should skip all the E's, the N's, and the R's and just count quarter notes. Okay, show us what that looks like. Maybe a little slower. Three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. And that makes okay. it, you know, that makes it easy to understand these uh, different rhythmic shifts. But really, like I said before, all there is to it is going from the downbeat to the offbeat and back. So every time you throw in a two, depends if the four was on the downbeat, 
you throw in a two, it moves to the offbeat. <laughs> and then if you throw in another two, it goes back to the down, to the downbeat. Gotcha. And, and then you just explore the different orchestrations and yeah. what you can do within those blocks of space. Yeah. Okay. But I'm pretty sure that just the orchestration I showed in the beginning with the four being accent, um, uh, the, the accent being on the tom and uh, the two being accented on the snare is good enough. Mm -hmm. It's really about getting into the phrases. And what I meant by easy is that it's easy to understand. Mm -hmm. It's easy to understand and, uh, and then put in a little uh, work. But it's so much fun because it frees up your playing. Yeah, so when you say it frees up your playing, um, how, how does it free up your playing? Like for a student that's watching this, because now they're counting two different things. They're counting the twos and the fours, and they're still trying to keep time yeah. and come back in on the one of the next bar. Um, so where, when, does it, when does that easiness kind of spark? What you could, how you could start is just, just like every time you see a four, you play right, left, left foot, and every time you see a two, you play right, left. Oh, okay. That's all there is to it, right? Yeah. And then you just, just need to make sure that you know where you are in the bar. Love it. And that's, that's quite easy to do. It, it really is. I have done it with beginners. They, they can get it in like no time within, within uh, like just the playing part of it. Uh, the only thing that takes longer is the phrasing part of it mm -hmm. so that you're really able to hear that, these phrases. But if you never challenge your ear, mm -hmm. you won't get better. I agree 100%. Yeah. And you got to play with the metronome so you, you know that you, when you're going to resolve it and you make sure you're coming back in at the right time. Yeah, that's a good idea. And then if you're uh, sure enough, you just don't do it with the metronome because the metronome helps you. And, oh, I see. And uh, you want to get rid of uh, the help of the need of the help of the metronome. So can you do me a favor, can, can you maybe show us just one or two examples from this page, yeah. just to see where we can take it and how you would use pages two and three on, on the PDF? Okay, so uh, which example would you want me to play? You choose, man, whichever Okay, one. I choose. Um, let me, I, I don't know these by heart, but let me, uh, let me play number five. Okay. And, um, okay, I oh, know, I don't have it. Four, 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 two, four, 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 two, four. Yeah, right, <laughs> okay. This is, it's systematic, you, it might not seem like it, it's just three fours, one, two, three fours, one, two, and the last four. All right. Yeah. Okay, uh, you want me to play it slow? Whatever temp you want. Oh, yeah, okay. Nice. Yeah, man. So, any of these uh, combinations on the sheet are, they, they are just all the same. Mm -hmm. They are not the same, but they are the same difficulty. It's just for you to practice different uh, combinations like these to, you know, be able to improvise in the end. I love it. Yeah, that's, that's, and it really helped me so much, this hmm. approach. Because uh, then you don't, you don't even think about uh, fills, like being building blocks. Mm -hmm. A fill is not a building block for me. A fill is more a concept that I use when I want to play a fill. Right. And I gotta tell you, I mean, when Yo sent me the sheet music for his lesson, I immediately looked at this uh, handout, the uh, reading text, I guess you call it, and I was able to just tap along and just internalize those groupings, like just like that. Like the visual aid really helps you. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. It may help you guys out there too. But no, I think I, I think it does because um, there's little numbers, uh, like just the counting is uh, notated be uh, beneath uh, the, the numbers, the two is in the fours, and that makes it easy to follow. Can I ask you to do one more on this page? Of course. Um, you can choose. I'm, I might have to read it though. No, I'm okay. Okay, I'm gonna do number two. Kay. I didn't do that. And I took the freedom there in the second uh, round to uh, change the orchestration up a bit. For those watching, rewind this lesson and count along with number two on, 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 on the PDF and listen yeah, to yeah. Uh, what he's playing there because it makes so much more sense when you do that. Yeah. I love it, man. Thanks, man. Yeah. 
So um, this concept is based on eighth notes, quarter and eighth notes. Um, like I said, we're moving the group of four to the offbeat, eighth note offbeat by playing two. As soon as you, as you think, okay, I got this in my pocket now and I'm starting to get bored, then is the time to uh, change the phrasing. But not before, because uh, this is a lot uh, more challenging what comes next. So what we do is we keep the four, right, left, left kick. And um, instead of playing or combining it with two, we add one more stroke to the other ingredient. So instead of playing, we play three strokes. Okay. So that makes it more interesting. So it's because, four and three now. Right. Okay. And then uh, the phrasing uh, <laughs> is based on sixteenth notes and not on eighth and quarter notes any, long any longer. I just need to take a look at the sheet and see what I... Okay. So, uh, again, for you to uh, uh, hear the difference, what I'm going to do is, whenever I play four, I'm going to hit the floor tom, and when I play the three, I'm going to hit the snare, right? And um, I'm going to play it really slow for you to follow. So that's number six on the PDF. And as I said, it's a lot more challenging, so it's more like uh, something for you that you can work on later if you're not familiar with the other concept. Okay. Okay, now do it at Yost Temple. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, I don't know. Okay. <laughs> right? Yeah, man. And as, yeah. as soon as you just distribute the accent, you, yeah, all the accents you play on any instrument of the kit, it starts sounding really nice. And the thing is, I just improvised the orchestration, right? The, mm -hmm. the, the phrasing I didn't change. I couldn't repeat that because it was just improvised. Right, right. So it's not something I always play. It's something I might repeat by accident, but normally um, these things are just improvised. And then on page three of the PDF, you've got your four and three uh, Chart, I guess you would call it. Yeah, I call it reading text, but it's not really appropriate. A chart is good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah chart is that'll really work. good. Yeah, that'll work. And so, um, just take a quick look uh, at number six again. There you see the the underlying rhythm of, of that fill, and now it's being notated in sixteenth notes because whenever you play three, mm -hmm. right, and you can see that uh, on two e and a. Uh, Mm -hmm. of the example, um, whenever you play three, the next four starts on a different 16th note other than just the eighth note offbeat. Makes sense. So within that fill, we have all different positions of uh, where a group of four within four 16th notes uh, can start. It's all in there, right? The first four starts on one. The next starts on the last 16th of Two. Um, then the next starts on four and then we have two E and again at the end we're like we like came around and are on the downbeat again on four. Right. And that's, uh, of course, it's rhythmically a lot more challenging. I mean, it seems confusing, but if you look at the notation, the way that you actually have it written, and, and you did a great job on this because uh, it, it does make a lot of sense. I hope it's not too confusing. No. I think yeah. it's, it's, it's quite easy to grasp. It's just um, 
you have to learn the phrases and get to, get to know the sound of it. Well, like you said too, it's a different approach, how you approach your fills. You're not thinking about it in chord note heavy, you know, one, right. two, three, four. You're just being a little bit more creative and sometimes they don't resolve on the one bar, you spread it over two bars. Right. Very cool stuff. Right. And if you feel like, you know, these are all two bar examples, if you feel like this is too long, you can just end the fill after the first bar, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And um, because some people ask me, hey, I, don't, I never actually play two bar fills and I agree. Yeah. Um, this is just for practicing purposes right. because the longer the phrase, um, the more challenging is it is to your ear. I love it, man. <laughs> me Any, too. <laughs> any, yeah. Anything else you want to add before we wrap up? Yeah. Um, maybe something because um, as as soon as uh, as you have played all the different uh, phrasing options that uh, there are on uh, page uh, three of the PDF. Um, and you checked out different orchestration possibilities, of course, it's possible to change the figure, mm -hmm. right? Uh, because this is a rhythmic concept, and I always look as dr uh, at drumming like this. The rhythmic material you have is one thing, and it's never gonna change. I mean, in, in 500 years from now, there's gonna be 16 16th notes to the bar. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it won't change. Mm -hmm. And it's the same as you, you combine groups of four and three, this is not going to change and how it sounds is not going to change either. What you can change though is how you make these concepts come to life. Mm -hmm. And this is just one thing that I like doing. Um, like one, or, or one f or figures that I like using. But let's say you want to change the figure just a little bit. For example, what I like is um, Instead of playing the bass drum, I play the hi-hat, like, for the four, and so instead of this, I play the left foot. Let me show you how it sounds. Let me say first, it doesn't sound good, but it will in okay. a second, okay? Okay. So then we have this. So. I don't really like the sound, but as soon as you put your right hand on the hi-hat, it starts sounding really nice, because then you have this. Right? And you do the same with the group of three notes. And then you combine, then you use the same rhythmic material, because as I said, it doesn't change. Mm -hmm. It's always mm -hmm. the same. Um, okay, let me just uh, try it. Um, okay. And then ultimately what you do is yeah. combine these ideas, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like this. Um. Right. Mm -hmm. So it is the same sticking, it's just a different orchestration that makes the difference. And it's the same rhythmic material and you can, yeah. uh, you know, what I did when I uh, got to know or got to work like that, I was just uh, thinking, okay, now I want to fill maybe with two bass drum strokes. So I just thought about, thought of something uh, and then tried it. And if it sounded good, I kept it. And if it didn't, I, of course I didn't. Yeah. So you just keep adding and changing the orchestration, doubling your bass drum, like you said. Yeah, that's yeah. a nice one too. Yeah. We did a whole course inside of Drumio Edge with Yost where he talks about expanding on this topic, I guess, in terms of orchestration and making them sound really, really cool. So if you like where this is going, you like the, the concept of this uh, method, I guess you can say, for developing fills, head on over to Drumio and um, sign up. You can do a free trial, drumio.com slash trial, and you can check out the course by Yost uh, that yeah. expands on this. And really, it's a, it's a really cool course. Course, man, the, 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 the creativity you have just from this method alone is, is yeah, it's limitless. You know? yeah, I, just think, I just think that to channel your creativity, it's good to have limits. And in this case, the limit is like uh, the, the rhythmic side of the fill. So we limit ourselves to combining either like we did in the first um, half, uh, four and two, or like now four and three, that's the limitation. That's, so the rhythmic side is, is, is clear, is set, and then you can uh, be creative with the orchestration of that. Mm. And that's so powerful.
Love it, man. Thank you so much. Okay, we're going to wrap it up there. I'm going to get you to play us out, though. You're going to play us yeah. a solo of some, yeah. and, and take as long as you want for the solo. Uh, <laughs> show us where you can really take this concept. Um, again, a huge thanks to Sonar, Meinl, Remo, Vic Firth uh, for helping with this lesson. The kit sounds beautiful, man. If you guys got to check out that SQ-1, it's, yeah. it's super nice. Um, and then one last thing I'll say to all you guys watching, um, these are just nine examples right. of some of these rhythmic patterns that you can create, four, two, two, four, four, two, that all kind of resolve. Um, I'd like to see your guys' uh, uh, ideas. Post in the comments below. What do you? What ideas do you have? Four two 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 four. I don't know if that even adds up, but I guess it's got to add up to sixteen. It should. If you want to play one bar, sixteen, right? If you want to play two bars, it should be thirty-two. Yeah. And so maybe also the orchestra, uh, other orchestrations or other ideas for uh, yeah. stickings. Yeah. Post your ideas below. I'd love to see the, the in the comments to see what you guys come up with. Um, thanks again for all you are what who are watching. Hope Hopefully you got something from this lesson. If you do like it, come over to drummy.com. We have a lot more from Yoast. Plus, we have your course from last time you came out, too. So right. if you like his teaching, we got a lot of Yoast inside of Drumio. I'm going to leave it uh, for you now to play us a solo right. as uh, you play us out. Oh, okay. Thanks. All right. Bye-bye.